Hi folks, welcome back to another Python tutorial. We're going to continue with the pandas introduction today and continue that in Jupyter Notebooks. Um, so if you remember, we had this pandas intro notebook we created last time. I'm going to start in a new notebook today. And we're going to cover a few new topics, mainly array indexing and some simple functions like sum and mean. We can run on arrays and also grouping if we have time to get to that. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a new Python 3 notebook. And that'll take just a sec here. And I'm going to name this oh, number two pandas intro. Okay, so first thing we need to import pandas as pd. And we're also going to import numpy as np. Okay, and so when we run that, we should be good to go. So let's click run. Okay, now we have those imported. And let's make ourselves a data frame. So let's go df equals pd dot data frame. And then we need to make a dictionary uh, that has our data in it. And so we're going to name these columns simply uh, a B, C, and D. Okay, and I haven't assigned any data to these columns yet. Let's go ahead and do that now. And so the data for A, um, let's make this a range from 1 to 10. So let's go range. 1, 11, which will give us numbers 1 to 10. B, let's, and then let's make just some, uh, let's just make uh, some names here. So let's go ahead and give a list of 10 names for B. And so here we'll have 10 different names. And do a space here. So let's just copy this over and this will be a string field. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then these last two will be numerical fields equal or sorry, NP random random. And uh, we need to give it a size here, which is just going to be ten. And so that'll give us a random number between 0 and 1. And let's do this is np.random.random. And this is going to also be 10. We'll multiply this by 10. So this will be a random number between 1 or between 0 and 10. Okay. So let's go over to the end of the row here. And let's just print out this data frame and see how this looks. So let's hit run. Okay, so there you go. Oh, I need to actually put some names in there, and we'll just uh, we'll just follow these with the uh, numbers so that we can see what's going on. Maybe we'll have some double assignments in there. Uh, five. Five, six, and seven. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and run this again. Now you can see we have our strings and our numbers in there. And so we are all good to go. Okay, so the first thing I want to focus on is let's just focus on some basic functionality we can do with pandas. So, um, Let's say I want to get the sum of columns of column C. So I can do DF and I can uh, put my column name in there, C dot sum. Hit the parentheses, we'll run this and this will give us a sum. You can see that our sum of C is 5.707. Okay. I can do this in multiple columns. So let's say I want to get C and D. I'm going to give it a list of columns. So I can do C, D, 
dot sum. Okay, and now let's run that. And I'm going to get two values back. So I'm going to get 5.7 and 27.8. Okay, and so you can see I can get the sums back for two different columns. Pretty easy to do. Um, we can do the same thing with, uh, let's just go with D this time, and we can do the minima. So we can get the minimum value. We can do DF D dot mean, get the mean value. Okay, and so there you go. So that's how you can do some simple functions or get some simple values back um, from your pandas data frame. Now let's talk a little more about slicing and dicing arrays, so about subsetting arrays. We did this a little bit last time, and I've shown you here, we've kind of continued with that, how we can get a column just by referencing its name or a list of columns by referencing the list of names. There are two functions I want to show you. They're called loc and iloc, L-O-C and I-L-O-C, and that's another way to subset data frames, which is actually really good because it will return a copy of the array um, and which can be very beneficial. You'll see as sometimes with NumPy, you'll get, or not with NumPy, with pandas, you'll get errors saying you're not working on a copy, you're working on a view, um, and so that's what you need to use. Make sure you're using loc and iloc. Um, but let's just start with loc here real quick. So if I do df.loc, I'm just going to use the square brackets again, and I'm going to find D. Let's see what that gives us. That should just return column D. Oh, and we have a key error. Okay, and that is probably because I did not return the columns. I want to return, oh, sorry, I need to give it a list. So let's give it a list of columns, square brackets, and now let's give that a try, and we still get an error. Sorry about that. I got things backwards here. Um, silly mistake. So the first one's going to reference the rows, and the second's going to reference the columns. Okay. So if I want to use dfloc to get column D, I'm going to reference all the rows, and I'm going to put D here. And when I run that, it will return all the values from column D. Okay. Now, if I want to do df.loc, I can put, I should be able to put in zero here. And let's see if that gives me row zero. Let's see what happens here. Okay. And so there you go. So that gives me the values for row zero. And if you want to remember what row zero is, it's right here. I have one, one, point seven, eight, point eight. You can see one, one, point seven, eight, point eight. And so that gives it for me for the row one. Now, if I want to get df uh, loc and I want to get the first row and I want to get, um, column D, I can do it just like this, and when I run that, you'll see that we get the value for just column D that gets kicked out. Um, and so that's another way we can index those arrays. Uh, we can also do um, greater than less than truth subsetting. So if I do df.loc uh, and I want to say uh, df column D is greater than five. I can do it just like that. Put some spaces in there to clear that up. And then we're going to hit run again. And you can see it returns these. Um, I can also do like df.loc and I want to do df b uh, is equal to five. And let's go ahead and hit run. And you can see it returns the rows where column B is equal to 5 there. Okay, so that's a quick overview of loc. Let's move on and do iloc real quick. And so it's going to be like df.iloc. And now the way this works, this is like NumPy style indexing, um, where you're going to index the number of the row and the number of the column. So let's say I wanted to get just um, the first five rows. I just do colon 5, and that will give me the first five rows and it'll do colon to get all of the columns. And so when I run this, you can see I get rows one through five, 
and all of the columns. Now let's just say I want to get, I want to do the same thing, um, but I want to get just the first two columns. So I can do df.iloc and colon five and just the first two columns, colon two, um, and let's run that. Okay, well you can see I just have two columns now. I can do the same thing if I want to get the last five column or last five rows negative five and the last two columns negative two and we can run that and now you can see we have the bottom five rows and the last two columns okay and so this can be useful if your data are organized in a way that you know what the numbers are um, but you don't want to deal with typing in the names of rows um, if you have like a lot of rows and you just know where they are based on some mathematical formula this can be super useful okay so that gets us through some indexing, which is going to be super important when working with data frames. And I want to cover one more thing in here, and that is the group by function, which gives you a whole lot of power to do a lot of things. So group by will combine um, like things in a column. So like here, uh, remember how I have three rows um, that are labeled with four? We can use group by to group all those together. So we'll put in column B is what we want to group by. And let's just see what this, what this gives us back. This isn't a normal usage, but let's see what this gives us back. Okay. Okay, and that's just going to give us a, data, a group data frame. And let's type in mean. So if we get the mean, this should give us the mean value for everything uh, grouped by column B. So let's go ahead and hit run on that. Okay, and there you can see that we have one entry. So we have five, four, one, seven, six, three, two. So we grouped by column B, and then we had the mean value for each of those. And I think it was four and five where we had multiple values. Um, and the other ones, we just had one value for each one. Okay, so that can be super useful. We can also do things like getting the minimum value. Um, so if I want to do df.group by uh, B, and I did dot min. This will give me just the minimum value for each of those. Let's click run here. Okay, and so you can see that now instead of having some average values here, we just have a single minimum value for each one of those. Uh, we can group by multiple columns. Let's first, let's add a new column. Let's do df. Um, E, and let's make E is going to equal, uh, let's see here, we'll do one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, one. Um, let me stress 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we get rid of one of these. Okay, and let's run that. Let's print out the data frame again. So let's run that. So now you can see that we have A, B, C, D, and E, and I can group by multiple columns. So if I do group by, and I'm going to group by B and E, and let's get the mean. And I'm going to run that. You can hit control enter to run a cell. So now you can see that for five, I have the zeros and the ones. For four, I have the zeros and the ones. And for these other ones, um, I only have a value of one. Okay, so you can see it broke those out by individuals. Um, I can also group this now. Oops. What did I do there? Oh, there we go. I can also group this now um, by E, so I can do df.group by, uh, and we'll just give it E, and we'll do dot mean, and we can run that. And you'll see that we'll just get two lines back this time. Now we just get two lines and we get the group um, for each of those columns based on whether it's a zero or whether it's a one.
Okay. And so that gives you a brief introduction to group by and a brief introduction to some ways to slice and dice or to index your data frames. So hopefully you found this pan, the second part of this pandas tutorial and pandas introduction useful. Um, coming up, I think we're going to use pandas uh, add numpy potentially to answer or to work on answering some actual data science interview questions. Uh, if you're not, if you're familiar with stratascratch.com, they have some interview questions from data science interviews, um, and we'll go through some of those and how you might be able to answer them. So stay tuned for that.